Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My beloved brothers and sisters, this beautiful final episode of the supplications from Revelation series, I begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, thumma alhamdulillah. All praise is indeed due to Allah. And after we owe praise to Allah and we declare praise to Allah, we still praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa salatu wa salamu ala abdillahi wa rasulihi Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. We always send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his companions, his household, and every one of us. May Allah bless us. Remember when you send blessings and salutations upon the best of creation, the most noble of all prophets, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes so pleased that he blesses you tenfold. So, man salla alayya wahidatan sallallahu alayhi biha ashra. Whoever is going to send blessings upon me once, Allah will bless him 10 times in return. So my brothers and sisters never ever become tired of sending blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammadin wa barik wa sallim. My brothers and sisters, this is the final of the episodes of this beautiful series as I have just said and I have chosen for this series something amazing. Every one of us ultimately would love to achieve the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speaks about how much Allah loves to forgive. The Quran speaks about how much Allah loves to forgive. We can go through a few of those evidences from the Quran and the Sunnah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us every night when a third of the night remains, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends to the lowest heavens and he says out, he calls out, هَلْ مِن تَائِبٍ فَأَتُوبَ عَلَيْهِ وَهَلْ مِن مُسْتَغْفِرٍ فَأَغْفِرَ لَهِ وَهَلْ مِن سَائِلٍ فَأُعْطِيَهِ Is there anyone seeking forgiveness that I can forgive him or her? Is there anyone repenting that I can accept the repentance for him or her? Is there anyone who wants to ask me anything so that I can give them? Wow. That is when the third of the night remains, Allah is calling out every night, my brothers and sisters, for your needs, for seeking forgiveness, for uh, repenting to Allah, get up at that time and repeat and reiterate the repentance that you have been engaging in. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely give it to you, my beloved brothers and sisters. When you say, oh Allah, forgive me, it is recorded by the angels. It is heard by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will come to help you on the day of judgment. It will come to help you in your grave. It will come to help you in the hereafter completely. And it will even help you in this world. Seeking the forgiveness of Allah is one of the best ways of earning the pleasure of Allah. Once you have the pleasure of Allah, all the doors are open one after the other. Your unhappiness is gone. Your, meaning your sadness is gone. Your suffering is gone. Your hurt is is cured. Your sickness is cured. Whatever you were looking for has come to you. How did it come to you? You wanted children, they came. You wanted sustenance, it came. It came because you earned the pleasure of Allah. You sought the forgiveness of Allah. So we don't say astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah in order for us to achieve something, but that is in order for us to achieve the forgiveness of Allah, which will then get us the something that we are looking for. This is just a slight technical explanation of it because sometimes people think we say astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah when we want money, when we want sustenance. No. We say astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah when we want the pleasure of Allah that will give us the sustenance. So there is one step between what we're looking for and what, we're, what we should be trying to achieve. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. That, that is also evidence from uh, the, the Quran and the hadith of the Prophet Another point of evidence, Inna Allah Ta'ala yaqbilu tawbat al-abdi ma lam yugharghir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to accept the repentance of a slave for as long as they have not gone to the last point or gotten to the last point before the soul removed or separated from the body. It's known as al-gharghara. When the soul comes right up to your neck and it's now leaving the body, at that stage, you can no longer say, oh Allah, forgive me, because now you have seen the reality of what death is. You're tasting it. You've seen the angels of death and it's too late. So that is something very, very important to know. We have hope for as long as we are breathing, for as long as we're alive. The minute you're 
breath starts uh, stopping, <laughs> meaning the minute your breath begins to stop, you start finding that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking that soul away at a certain point when you see the angels and so on, too late. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. He makes mention of the Pharaoh and how he did that. When he saw the angels, it was too late. He got to the Gargara and then he says, Oh, I believe in the one whom Banu Israel, Moses and Aaron and Musa alayhi salam, Harun, may peace be upon them. They believe in, Allah says, too late. Now you want to say that you turn to Allah when we asked you to turn to Allah throughout your entire life and you didn't. So therefore, my brothers and sisters, turning to Allah requires us to repent immediately. Don't wait for some time. Do it now. Do it today. Make sure that you turn to Allah. We're at the end of a beautiful season. Turn to Allah. You will earn the pleasure of Allah. Usually the end of Ramadan, there is something known as Laylatul Ja'iza, the prize giving night, the night of Eid. Don't displease Allah. Make sure that your clothing, what you, you've cut and what you're going to wear is going to be decent, reasonable within the pleasure of Allah. I pause for a moment. When we have our weddings, my brothers and sisters, it's not a day to displease Allah through what you've chosen to wear, whether you're the bride or the groom or the bridesmaids or whatever you are and whoever you are, you are still under Allah. You still desperately need the mercy of Allah. How can you choose a day where Allah has given you to be happy, to displease Allah? You made the one who gave you the day of happiness to displease him, subhanallah. So therefore, the day of Eid, the day of your weddings, the happy days, the days when you know you have an occasion, make sure that you are dressed appropriately. I have seen people from poor countries whom when they dress, they dress so beautifully. Everything is covered in the proper way. It's a lovely dress. Yes, I do know it's in the presence of other females, etc. But it is such a beautiful dress and it's such beautiful clothing, even the males. They dress in such a beautiful way. Everything they're supposed to cover is covered in a proper way with the material that is not tight fitting and you know not revealing and so on. And they earn the pleasure of Allah. Why can we not do that? Sometimes the, the more Allah has blessed you with in this world in terms of wealth, sometimes the more we displease Allah on occasions of this nature. So I think we can make a difference in this regard and we can definitely please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not difficult. It's very, very easy. You can search, you can check, you can see what others have done and you will find a role models to follow. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that to us. I diverted a little bit because the day of Eid that comes up, we always tend to displease Allah on that day. And this is why we're moving backwards as an ummah because the days that we are supposed to be given by Allah to please Him, Come on, come on. I think we can do a little bit more. You find an extra act of worship usually. I'm sure we can do more to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, myself included. I need to improve a lot as well. May Allah make it easy for every one of us to identify our faults and mistakes and to be able to please Him. Amen. So, uh, the, the, the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, he speaks about how uh, the, the tawbah is acceptable right up to the last moment. I mentioned the Pharaoh and I told you how it was too late for him. There is another narration also. There are verses of the Quran also. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how his mercy is broader than all the sins that can be committed, no matter what you've done. You know, the verse that has in it the most hope is a verse of Surah Al-Zumar, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Tell them, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, O my worshippers who have transgressed against Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, who have wronged themselves in transgression against Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. For indeed, Allah will forgive all your sins. He is most forgiving, most beneficent. SubhanAllah. He is most merciful, most forgiving. That is Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Innahu huwa al-ghafoor al-rahim. Most forgiving, most merciful. So my brothers and sisters, never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. As we end a season of obedience, we go into greater obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to dedicate this day to the words that we were taught by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, supplications from revelation, the ultimate supplication 
seeking forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, using the highest of words to seek forgiveness. Something the Prophet sallallahu taught us word for word. He says it is called Sayyidul Istighfar. Sayyidul Istighfar, the master of all words of seeking the forgiveness of Allah. The best of words to seek forgiveness of Allah are the following words. So he used to say Sayyidul Istighfari and Yaqul al Abdu. You know, the, the, the best of terms to seek forgiveness of Allah is for a worshipper to say the following. Then he would say, Allahumma anta Rabbi, O oh Allah, you are my Rabb. La ilaha illa anta khalaqtani. There is none worthy of worship besides you. You have created me. Wa ana abduka. And I am your slave. Subhanallah. Wa ana ala ahdika wa wa'dika mastata'atu. And I am upon your covenant and your promise according to my ability. As best as I can. Subhanallah. So we are saying, Allahumma anta rabbi, la ilaha illa anta khalaqtani. Oh Allah, you are my Rabb. There is none worthy of worship besides you. You created me. Khalaqtani means you created me. Wa ana abduk, and I am your slave. I am at your disposal, at your mercy. Wa ana ala ahdika wa wa'dika mastata'atu. And as best as I can, I am upon the covenant. What was the covenant? To worship you alone. I am upon the covenant to worship you alone as best as I can. And I'm upon the promise. What was the promise? Not to sin against you. The promise primarily was to worship you alone. Allahumma anta rabbi la ilaha illa anta khalaqtani wa ana abduk wa ana ala ahdika wa wa'dika mastata'atu a'udhu bika min kulli sharri ma sana'atu I seek refuge in you from all the evil that I have done. Subhanallah. I seek protection in you from the evil that I have done. Now when we do evil, the evil has evil that will come back to us in the form of an effect. Some bad effect. When you do bad, don't think it's not going to come to you. It's going to be worse. When you do bad, bad will come back to you. You know, when you do good, good comes back to you. When you do bad, bad comes back to you. But if you seek the forgiveness of Allah, you wipe it out. So now the bad does not come back to you. So we are saying, أعوذ بك من كل شر ما صنعتو. I seek protection in you from the evil of everything bad that I have done. أبو لك بنعمتك علي. I admit completely. I confess. I admit. I acknowledge all the gifts that you have bestowed upon me. Now, you see, when we commit a sin, we actually don't deserve the gifts of Allah. When we commit sin and we go against Allah, we don't deserve. But Allah gives it to us. You know, Allah is not like you and I, subhanAllah, where someone does bad to you and you block, you stop, there are sanctions against them and that's it, you know, <laughs> subhanAllah. Allah is not petty. Allah is great. He created you. He loves you. He's waiting for you to return to Him. That's all. He's waiting for you to repent to him. He gets so, so happy when you and I seek forgiveness that that happiness is described in a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, of a man who was lost in a desert, hungry, and he had all his provision on his camel. He put the camel aside, he tied it. And he went to rest. When he got up, his camel disappeared and he was lost completely in the middle of the desert. Nothing, no hope, no mercy, no nothing. And you know what? He started calling out to Allah and uh, some time later, he spotted his camel. He was so excited out of his excitement. He, he blundered in the way he said, he says, Oh Allah, Oh Allah, I am your Lord and you are my slave. See, that was a mistake. That mistake was made out of excitement. The Prophet ﷺ describing the happiness of Allah says, Allah becomes more happier than that man. The happiness of that man was through a mistake. The happiness of Allah is never through a mistake. Subhanallah. Allah becomes very, very happy when we repent. So let's repent. My brothers and sisters, make Allah happy. We say, Allahumma ardini, Allahumma ardini warda anni. Oh Allah, make me happy. And be happy with me. We learned that supplication in one of the episodes, didn't we? I hope we still remember that uh, supplication. What a beautiful supplication. Allahumma ardi, Allahumma ardini warda anni. So 
The, the Prophet Sallallahu here is telling us to use these beautiful words known as Sayyidul Istighfar. Allahumma anta rabbi, la ilaha illa anta, khalaqtani, wa ana abduka, wa, wa ana ala ahdika wa wa'dika ma istata'atu, a'udhu bika min kulli sharri ma sana'atu, abu'u laka bi ni'matika alayya. I, I confess, I acknowledge, I actually, actually the word is acknowledge. I acknowledge all the gifts that you have bestowed upon me, even though I don't deserve them. وَأَبُوُّ And I acknowledge, here we can use the term confess, all my sins. Whatever sins I've done, I acknowledge. Ya Allah, I've, I've sinned. I've done wrong. I might have done whatever. Everyone does different things. So we're acknowledging that we were sinful. We did something that displeased Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَبُوُّ بِذَنْبِ فَاغْفِرْ لِي فَإِنَّهُ لَا يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ إِلَّا أَنْتَ So forgive me, O Allah, for indeed there is none who will forgive these sins besides you. You are the one who will forgive me, so forgive me. And Allah becomes so pleased with those words. Imagine you are asking Allah, saying, O oh Allah, I acknowledge that you've done so much good for me, and I am confessing I've done a lot of bad. But I want you to forgive me because no one is going to forgive me besides you. It's only you who can forgive. I, whom am I going to turn to? Who am I going to turn to? I cannot turn to anyone besides you, O oh Allah. So here I have turned to you, O oh Allah. I'm acknowledging you are my Lord. I am your slave. You've done so much for me. Allahumma anta rabbi. La ilaha illa anta khalaqtani. Wa ana abduk. Wa ana ala ahdika wa wa'dika mastata'at. Oh Allah, you are my Lord. You created me. I'm your slave. I'm trying my best to fulfill the promise that I made to you. To fulfill the covenant. I'm trying my best. I seek, uh, I seek your protection from the evil of whatever I've done. I acknowledge that you've done me so much in terms of favor. And I acknowledge that I've perpetrated so many sins. So oh Allah forgive me for indeed there is no one to forgive me besides you. What beautiful words these are. Subhanallah, if someone were to ask you for something using words uh, similar to that, I mean, obviously, I don't mean uh, seeking forgiveness. This is Allah. There is no sharik. There is no partner unto Allah. We are not allowed to use these words for anyone besides Allah. But if someone was to be so sweet to you, so kind to you, so calm, so acknowledging of their wrongdoings and asking you, please forgive me, please forgive me, you need to learn to forgive. So my brothers and sisters, this is known as Sayyidul Istighfar. The dua that I've just said, and I'm going to repeat it one more time for us to repeat in this blessed moment, subhanAllah. This is known as Sayyidul Istighfar. You know, Sayyid is the leader. This is the leader when it comes to the duas of the Istighfar. You want to know, Astaghfirullah, Subhanallah, May Allah, Atubu ilayk, you know, Arhamni, Ghfirli. All these are duas. Rabbana ghfir lana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabbit aqdamana wa surna ala al-qawmil kafirin. All these are duas, supplications. But the one that I said today is known as the leader of all these duas. We must memorize it. We must memorize this dua. We must call out to Allah every day using this. I promise you, it will make a difference in your life. Listen to it. In fact, repeat it after me. Allahumma anta rabbi la ilaha illa anta khalaqatani wa ana abduka wa ana ala ahdika wa wa'dika mastata'atu a'udhu bika min kulli sharri ma sana'atu abu'u laka bi ni'matika alayya wa abu'u بِذَنْبِي فَاغْفِرْ لِي فَإِنَّهُ لَا يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ إِلَّا أَنْتَ Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. Subhanallah, amazing. And I want to end by making mention of the fact that if we want the forgiveness of Allah, we also have to be forgiving. We have to learn to forgive. It's not easy, but you have to learn to release. When Allah sees you have a quality of forgiveness, his quality of forgiveness is way beyond yours and mine. He will definitely make sure he forgives you. Forgive and embrace. Would you not like Allah to forgive you? 
Indeed, Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. These verses are in Surah An-Nur, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to or speaks about the incident of Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu an, when his daughter and the mother of the believers, Aisha as Siddiqah radiallahu anha, was accused of immorality by the hypocrites of Medina. And there was a man known as Mistah ibn Athatha who was related to Abu Bakr. He was a poor person from Mecca who did hijrah. Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anhu used to spend money on him, used to help him. And this man started spreading rumor about the daughter of Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anhuma and the, the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the man spread the rumor to the degree that it got to the ears of Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anhu. And Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anhu says very clearly, I'm no longer going to spend money on this person, wallahi. I swear by Allah, never going to spend money. Imagine my relative, a poor person, I'm spending money on them so often, they are, they've come, made hijrah and come all the way from Mecca and they don't even uh, protect their mouths from rumor about, about my daughter. And she was innocent. So when he took that oath, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressed the matter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Nur, those with virtue whom we have bestowed our favor upon, they should never swear an oath not to spend on others who are their relatives, who are poor, who have made hijrah, uh, who are trying hard to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in other ways. Rather, they should embrace and forgive. Do they not want to achieve the forgiveness of Allah? Or do you not want to achieve the forgiveness of Allah? For indeed, Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. So from this narration, we see very clearly that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is encouraging all of us from that lesson to say, try to forgive, try to forgive, try to forgive your family members, your spouse, your children, your parents, your uncles, your aunts, your brothers, your sisters, whoever they may be, community members, members of the ummah. Sometimes you may want to just forgive. It's actually a release release of the stress and the mountain, the burden that's upon you. When you hold things, it weighs in on your shoulders. You can actually feel it. You feel very stressed. You move your neck and you're feeling all these, you know, like a huge burden. It is true that that burden affects your health as well. Release it. You may not want to have much to do with that person thereafter. It does not mean that when you forgive someone, and you've embraced them, that you need to now, you know, return to them and spend time with them and laugh and joke with them and meet with them and eat with them and drink with them. No, it may take time to achieve that and you may not achieve that. But at least there's no grudge. At least you've forgiven. You're leading your life. They're leading their life. When we greet, we meet. Salam alaikum, alaikum as -salam. How are you? I'm fine and so on. May Allah bless you and you walk away. You don't need to have to have so much to do with the person after you've forgiven them. It's a mistake that some people think. Uh, some people think that you have to go back and, and sh pretend like nothing ever happened. No, we will forgive, but we will not necessarily forget. Because forgetting, Allah's given me a brain, Allah's given me a mind. I don't want to be bitten from the same direction twice. I've forgiven you. But subhanAllah, let me stay away. You know, I'm, I'm not a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm not so strong. May Allah strengthen every one of us, grant us goodness and ease. I may decide to have slightly less to do with you because I know I've been bitten. Uh, sometimes you want to have nothing to do with a person who's extremely toxic, but you've forgiven them. There's no harm. You need to protect yourself, your offspring from the harm of someone else. They keep on harming you. Another thing that's very interesting just before we end is when a person's harm against you has not stopped and you've forgiven them once, you know, you don't have to keep forgiving them all the time. There is a limit beyond which maybe your spirituality might make you say, I forgive you no matter what you do and what you've done. You might not want to tell them that, but you also have rights. Remember, there is a point beyond which you can say, listen, that's it now. I need this justice in this thing here and so on. When you have forgiven someone for wealth that they owe you, it doesn't mean that they no longer owe it to you. 
Subhanallah, that's a very interesting point. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us so that we can forgive people in the true way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May we end this beautiful series with the acceptance from Allah, the forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah be pleased with every one of us and grant us Jannatul Firdaus. I've really enjoyed myself speaking with you for this entire episode uh, of this entire series. And I ask Allah to accept it and to gather us in Jannatul Firdaus. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد سبحان الله وبحمده سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب